It may be helpful to uh, just use a nail and a hammer to put a just a mark, a bit of an indent, approximately five millimeters from the the curve. Uh, that will stop the drill bit from moving around when you try to drill it. Simple as that. Okay, now you can drill it. Remember to use the grips. Now you don't drill all the way through, you simply just drill through enough for one side of the steel and maybe just a little bit in further until you can just see you've gone through. Also make just enough mark on the other side to get the, uh, the smaller drill bit started. Okay, now you've drilled the hole through one side, not through both, as I accidentally did to that one. <laughs> uh, you get the other drill bit, the uh, 764 of an inch, and with the little mark that you've made in, in there, with the bigger one, it will be guided exactly to the center, and drill smaller holes for the rest of them. Okay, should they should all look like this by now. One larger hole with a smaller one on the other side. The final step in the whistle is get your screwdriver, find a spot to wedge it open, On the side with a smaller hole, you'll have a couple of little burrs, get rid of them. That's pretty much it. In uh, order to blow these ten feet whistles, you have to put it in your mouth, between two fingers like that, and put the edge of your tongue along the entire length of the whistle, just the very tip of your tongue along the edge and you have to kind of funnel the air up through the bottom hole which is the larger one. When you blow it you have the, the small hole on top, the larger one on the bottom. You funnel the, the difference in air pressure is what makes the actual sound so hung along the edge and try to blow up through the bottom. You can vary the pitch up and down, make it a little bit more raspy if you want. It's supposed to uh, mimic a rabbit in distress. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Happy hunting. The finished product.